Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to be doing part two of my historical romance readathon winter edition vlog. <laughs> If you haven't already seen part one, go watch that. That is Monday through Wednesday of this readathon's vlog. Um, I read three books, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And now we're gonna be starting part two, which is going to be today, which is Thursday, um, and then through Sunday. Um, it's actually like eight o'clock on Thursday though, so I didn't vlog for most of the day. I haven't read anything yet today. Um, I uh, am st uh, still have a sore throat and I just kind of spent, I didn't go to work today. My mom didn't go to work today since she's not feeling well either. And we just kind of watched Christmas movies all day on the couch um, and relaxed. So now it, I am up in my room and I'm going to be reading some. Um, so the book that I'm currently reading is Mine Till Midnight by Lisa Klapis. Um, this is book one in the Hathaway series, but people recommend that you read the Wallflower series first. In my part one vlog, I read Devil in Winter, and I talk about how I had never read the rest of the Wallflowers, and um, it's just going to continue on the trend of reading books when you probably should read the other ones, but I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so I uh, got the library um, loan or um, this one was available from my library um, and I was looking for historical romances through the library and this one was available. Um, so I'm reading this one and I'm actually 60% of the way through it right now. I started it last night and read like 60% while I was uploading my part one vlog. Um, so this one follows Cam Rowan who I adore amazing amazing hero um and he is introduced actually in devil in winter so that was really interesting uh fun i had no idea when i clicked to read this book that that was whose book it was but i loved him in devil in winter so i'm really excited that this is his romance um and it's his romance with his heroine whose name i think is amelia and she is the oldest sister in the of the hathaway family she has an older brother um who is the Earl. He's like titled now. Um, he, the families, all the people above him in the line of su succession died um, kind of like one after the other and they now think it's that, that the title is cursed but now their brother has this title and their brother is kind of a shit show. He had this, um, he's like a drunk and an addict and he just does not, he's going through a really hard time and he's like a mess so Amelia kind of runs the whole family um and she's kind of she's a spinster and she's kind of um resigned herself to the fact that she's probably never get, gonna get married because she's responsible for taking care of her family um their parents are both dead and um she's just all they got and since her brother's a drunk and he blows through money like crazy she's got to be the one that's like nitpicky and um making sure that the younger siblings are like have clothes and are presentable enough to go into society since they are titled um so that's where that is um and then so she meets him in the beginning their first like meeting is when she is searching for her brother because he's been missing for like three days and he they think he's at the club this like gambling club that cam works at which is actually owned by sebastian saint vincent who is the hero in devil in winter so cam works for that club um and he's the manager and so when she shows up and is like have you seen my brother he helps her find him um and then he actually kisses her like when um he's like Yo, we're never gonna see each other again probably so he kisses her um and she's really startled and everything and it's it's great um <laughs> and now it's like um a while later and she needs to like get out of the city basically she thinks the family needs to get out of the city in order to kind of help her brother get away from things and she's like maybe that'll help him like dry out and get his ship back together um and so they move to this estate now they that they now own because they're now the holders of the title um 
and the estate happens to be the neighbor to Lord Westcliff, who is the hero from It Happened One Autumn, I think is the book that he's in, um, who is Sebastian St. Vincent's best friend. Um, so <laughs> it's great. So she, uh, Cam, happens to be at Lord Westcliff's house um, and they run into each other again and he kind of like saves her life um, when she wanders onto Westcliff's property by accident not knowing like where the line is um, and it's amazing it's great I really really love it um, so where I'm at right now it's 60% in and her house just like burned down her brother is was drunk and left a candle and accidentally set a fire um, and she, uh, one of her sisters wakes up in the middle of the night and is like, I smell smoke. Um, and they all have to evacuate because the house is on fire. Um, and so a whole bunch of townspeople, including Cam, come and help them um, with that. Um, and now because of the fire, they, her and her family have to now stay at Westcliff's house, which is where Cam is. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I love Cam. Um, he's great. Amelia is great too, but she's a little stubborn, which is kind of annoying because she's very like, um, <clears throat> uh, she won't take help from anyone. Like she really is very like proud and she doesn't want to accept help from anyone because she thinks that makes her kind of like a failure and she doesn't want to need help need help from anyone but she really needs help because she's kind of drowning in all this responsibility that she has um and it can be slightly irritating when I'm like you literally have no other options just let him help you um but she just like does not want anyone's help um and just like lies to people and tells them that oh yeah they the house is fine when it actually was like super um because like when they first moved in the house was like very ramshackle it was like very run down they had um they it needed a lot of renovations and everything it was like not exactly safe to live there um and when they are at dinner at west coast house um, a lady Westcliff says something, oh, oh, it must have been, it must need work. And she's like, oh, it's not that bad. It just needs kind of like a light dusting, but it's actually like unsafe to live there. Um, so it's a little annoying, like as a reader where I'm like, just accept help from him. He, you need help. You are obviously drowning. Um, but I do like her, um, and her ability to like stand up for herself and to um, not let anyone um, like make decisions for her, which I really appreciate. She's like, I am basically the head of this family. I am not gonna be denied anything just because I'm a woman or just because um, you think you know what's best for me. You don't, I do. Um, so I like that aspect, but it's like to a point. Uh, but I've been talking for eight minutes and my throat is killing me, so I am just going to continue reading and I will let you know when I, uh, have something else to say. <laughs> Good morning. It is, in fact, the next day. Um, it's Friday now. Um, I am still have this crazy, horrible sore throat. Um, I don't feel sick other than the sore throat, so... We're just going to keep going, but I am just staying in bed all day. Um, I just don't want to risk it in case it is something that could be contagious or something. Um, anyway, book-wise, I finished Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Klapis, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I adored Cam as a hero. I thought it was so, so, so good. I'm very intrigued now to read the rest of the series and um her siblings books um it was really 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 good um so after I finished that one I uh moved on and I started a book called The Book of Scandal by Julia London and I read like the first listened to the first like 10% of the book um and decided that I didn't 
I wasn't into it. Um, I chose that one because it was a marriage and trouble romance. I don't really like marriage and trouble romances, um, but it was one of the squares on the bingo board, so I wanted to try it at least. Um, but I, I didn't wasn't into it, and I just don't want to force myself to read something that I'm not gonna like. So instead, I am focusing on um, the square for not in Europe. And I, um, my library had Destiny's Embrace by Beverly Jenkins. I think it's Destiny's Embrace. It's book three in the series. I haven't read the first two, of course. Um, but it's book three in the series. And I chose this one. One, it was the only one that was available from the library. And two, I am very intrigued by, um the fact that it's pirates um so she in the description it was talking about how she steals his ship and I was like absolutely that sounds great I'm into it it's destiny's captive not destiny's embrace sorry um but I'm currently 25 percent of the way through that one and I um really liked the beginning with her stealing his ship um it's about a guy named Noah who is, um, he's on, he owns this ship and this company with his friend where he brings goods to different countries and sells them. Um, so he like ships goods to people and he's made a lot of money at it. Um, and then the heroine is Pilar who is a uh, part of the rebels in Cuba, I think, and she needs a ship. Um, and she s kidnaps him and ties him up in order to steal his ship. And he is irritated by that, but he can't go after her because he has to be home for his mother's wedding um, in uh, America. And so we haven't seen them back together again. Like, she he hasn't gone after her, tried to find her. She was wearing a mask. He doesn't really know. He doesn't know how to get her. But he wants his ship back. The ship meant a lot to him. So he wants his ship back. Um, and so I'm intrigued by that, like, plot line and that storyline and that hero and heroine. But currently, like, where we're at right now, it's focusing a lot on the mother, his mother. The mo hero's name is Noah. And his mother is getting married. And she just got married and like I really don't care about his mother. I just want to go back to him and Pilar as the hero and heroine. Um, I just like don't really care about his mother at all. Um, um, and maybe like the first two books have her in it and you kind of like get a little bit of like a background romance from her and that's why like it like builds through the three books. But currently I don't care. I just want to see more of the hero and heroine together so um that's where we're at right now um this is not my first Beverly Jenkins I've read I think two or three Beverly Jenkins books before this um but it is the first one in this series that I've read so I am excited and I think it'll go well and I have three more days of the readathon because it's Friday morning so I have three more days of the readathon um and I've read so many books already. So this is great. All the other books that I've read have been like 4.5 or 5 stars. So that's awesome. So go us. <laughs> um, and a new author with Kate Bateman. So that's great. Um, I am currently 45% of the way through Destiny's Captive. And I really liked it. It went in a very different direction than I thought it was going to go. Um, so Noah tracked down Pilar and then he they were he like kind of like asked her to dance and she didn't really know if he knew if she, that she was who she was um and he did and when he calls her out on it while they're dancing she makes a run for it and then when he chases after her they have like a full ass sword fight it's fantastic in the middle of like her uncle's party that he's having um and then, <clears throat> and then, uh, they get to, um, they, like, finish the sword fight, and, like, he wins, um, and then he goes into kind of her, her uncle's office with the uncle and the mother and the sister and her, um, and him, and he 
tells the whole story to the uncle and the the mom. So he tells this whole story to the uncle and the mom of like how they met, how they know each other, and the fact that she stole his ship. And the ship has now been sunk by the Spanish army. So it's not even like she can give the ship back. Um, and he basically uh, gets, uh, he like, he's like, I could turn threat, I could turn her into the police, like no problem. Like she could go to jail for this or I can marry her. And everyone is like super taken aback by it. And I was super surprised. It was not what I was expecting him to say at all. Um, I had no idea that this that's where it went. But he had talked in the beginning about how he would never marry um, because he was in love with the sea and that he didn't want a wife who would just be like at home and want, he wanted to spend his time like on the ship and he needed somebody who would like challenge him and fight him and not somebody who'd just be like a meek wife. Um, and so when he was sword fighting, he like, when she was like fighting him and sword fighting him and he saw that fire, he had like more fun than he had had in his like le whole life basically. Um, and so he wants to marry her. And so they, uh, she doesn't want to, uh, but she agrees to let him court her. And then she finds out that um, there are people after her for gun running um, for the rebels. And so she knows that her best chance to like save herself is to marry him because he's an American citizen and they can leave for America and he's a wealthy man and he's powerful so he is a good husband for her to have and so she finally agrees to marry him and that's where I'm at right now they just got married and are going home to live in California where he lives um on her his mother's ranch so I am interested to see how their relationship progresses now that they're married and now that they are going to be uh, like living on this farm together with his brothers and their wives and his mom and her husband. Um, so it's going to be like a very interesting family dynamic. Um, I do wish that we'd gotten more time like of them like in a ship. Like I wish that that was part of it um, because we haven't really had like it's has a ship on the cover. It's like a pirate pirate romance. Um, but they were only on the ship for like one, like half a chapter. Um, so I hope that that like returns and that they get to like, he gets to like see her on, on his, sh on a ship and they, so, um, that's where, that's where I'm at. <laughs> hey, so I, uh, after my throat was hurting for like the whole day, I went to, um, my dad's best friend is a doctor and I went to his office like right after it closed um, because he had appointments all day. Um, so I went up to his office right after it closed, have him look in my throat um, just to make sure that nothing was wrong, like overly wrong. Um, turns out he thinks that I have strep throat. So he gave me an antibiotic um, and I just got home from that. Um, and I'm gonna have some soup for dinner. Um, it's like crazy painful to swallow, so I didn't want anything other than just like soup broth. Um, and the Hating Game trailer, um, or the Hating Game movie came out today, so I'm gonna lay in my bed and watch that. So I will probably read like much later um, after the movie's over, but I will probably won't update until tomorrow. So hopefully I feel better then. Um, I am still really liking Destiny's Captive. I've read a little bit more in it. Hello. Um, so I'm here to close out this video. Um, it's actually Monday, um, December 13th. And so the readathon's over. So I'm sorry this video was so chaotic. I haven't read any more historical romance than the last time I updated you. Um, I got diagnosed with strep throat um took got some antibiotics and now that's pretty much cleared up I only have one day of antibiotics left I think and so that's great um and then I came down with like a crazy ass cold which I still have so I haven't been doing anything lately other than like laying in my bed um but I wanted to close out this video so I 
ended up reading, I think, four or five books for the readathon. Um, and then I'm 60, still 60% 60 through Destiny's Captives, so I will finish that eventually. Um, but that's great. Um, thank you for Jess and Lisa and Lacey for hosting the readathon. I had a great time for the time that I was able to read. Um, but that's it. So I hope that the next time I see you, I feel better. See you next time. Bye.